Nancy J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to another awesome episode of VO Buzz Weekly. Yep, and we have Rodney Salisbury on the show today. Multi-talented, super yes. cool guy. We have some, I'll tell you what we got. We have music for you guys today. We have voiceover tips that are gonna blow your mind from Rodney and they're gonna help you out a lot, mm -hmm. right? Yes, absolutely. I think we should just go there right now. With us in the studio is an accomplished and versatile stage, screen, and voice actor. You hear him all the time, you guys, just wait. He is also a best-selling author of You Can Bank on Your Voice and Step Up to the Mic. He is a two-time NAACP Image Award nominee, and he is just an all-around amazing guy, and we're so happy to get buzzed with him. He is Rodney Salisbury. Rodney Salisbury, my man, put it there. Chuck, how you Dude, doing there? I gotta Hi. tell you. Good to see you. Good to see you. He made it, he made it on the show. He's been calling us for months. Hey man, when can I get We've on the show? Going back and you forth have to wait, to Rodney. You have to wait in due time. Uh, just kidding. Uh, so happy that you actually got in your car and came on down here to share with us and with our fans out there and your fans out there. Um, we're very excited to hear what you have to say. You've done it all. I mean, there's like nothing, right? I was telling you yeah, earlier, it's like yeah. there's like nothing Rodney hasn't done. I was it wondering, was so I, wonder much fun. I wonder if he fishes. Are you a fisherman? <laughs> he wants no. you to be a lumberjack. Okay. That's the he only thing he doesn't do then. Right, right. Are you a hockey player? No, not at Okay, I found two things that he doesn't do. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was a, so much fun. I was. To research you because, I mean, I would just find these things and go, wait, but there's this and there's that. And we want to try to talk about everything, which is going to be a challenge. Yep. We, we'll have like a four hour show. Absolutely. But, um, but thank you so much for being here and for doing all the incredible stuff. You're so versatile and you just are so generous with what you're doing. Absolutely. Well, well first of all, I want to thank you for having me on the show. I am a big fan and I watch all the time and you've had some of my best friends on the show. Oh, and thanks. I've learned so much watching them and watching you. And it's really an honor to be here. Thank you. Well, thank oh, you. Yes. Then thank we're, you. We're both honored. Yes. How about that? Um, so check it out. You've been uh, on Broadway, mm -hmm. uh, toured with a Broadway show. Mm -hmm. You are, you've been uh, on TV, films, soap operas. Take us through a little journey of how that all started and how it all led to Rodney as a voice actor. Okay. Well, I started out at home. My parents tell me that at two years old, I was actually singing. Hmm. My father was in a group called the Downbeats. The Downbeat. And yeah, the Downbeats, and they were on the Motown label. Nice. And uh, I would practice with the group and mm -hmm. do a lot of singing. And then I was, you know, your, your parents are pushing you and encouraging you, and relatives are listening and telling you that you're great, and <laughs> yeah. you start to believe it. Yep. And I went on to high school, and I started doing high school plays. I played all the leads in high school. Mm -hmm. I was Tony in West Side Story. Oh, I love West Side yeah. Story. Yeah, I had a much higher voice then. <laughs> I was uh, Sky Masterson in Guys and Dolls, and I was uh, Billy Bigelow in Carousel. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I continued to do plays in school, and then I went on to college at the University of Michigan, and I played the role of Pearlie in the musical Pearlie, Victorious. Mm -hmm. And uh, I graduated, and. I was with my girlfriend at the time, who is my wife now. Wow. And Aww. she was still going to school at the University of Michigan. And um, I would go and visit her because she was in a five-year program. And one Sunday, I went to a play called Your Arms Too Short to Box with God. Mm. And I watched the show, and it was a Sunday matinee. Mm -hmm. And when the show was over, I went backstage and said hello to everybody and I told them what a great job they did and I happened to run into the stage manager and I told him that I sing and he said really he said look um, we actually are looking for someone to replace someone who's going to be leaving soon maybe you could come back after dinner and sing a song so um, I went and um, I came back and I sang a song from um, The Wiz the Scarecrow song. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I was born great. on the day before yesterday, I think was the name of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got it. Wow. They, they took me. And uh, the next thing I knew, I was in uh, Indianapolis. That was the first stop on the mm -hmm. national tour that I went on. And it, it was great. It was wonderful. It was everything I had dreamed of, right? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And uh, so that's how it got started. And um, I went on to get a teaching certificate, right? And I taught school. 
So teaching school got me pe prepared for all the teaching that I'm doing now mm -hmm. in voiceover, right? What did you, what, public school, right? At public school, junior high school. All right. Wow. Man, the inner city of Detroit. <laughs> I had some inner tough Inner city Detroit. Yeah. Let's, I'm just, telling you right let's now. just let that rest yeah, a second. That, yeah, that was yeah. a journey right yeah. there. Yeah. That rest. And uh, well, my students were tough. Thank you for doing that. Yes, we had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. though. We had a lot of fun. Unfortunately, I couldn't stay with them because I ended up going off with that sure. uh, particular right. uh, musical. But um, so I got out here to California and um, I always wanted to come to California. You know, I used to be in my dorm room at the University of Michigan and all my dorm mates got to know a little thing that I would always say. We would always watch the uh, Johnny Carson show mm -hmm. and we would watch his monologue. We would all be in one dorm room. And when the monologue was over, I would hold my hands up and say, Rodney Salisbury, Los Angeles, California, thank you. Every time, nice. every night that we would watch, mm. I'd raise my hand right at the end of Johnny's monologue, Rodney Salisbury, Los Angeles, California, thank you. Everybody knew that this is where I wanted to come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And here I was some years later. Yeah. I made it. Yeah. So anyway, I get here and um, I um, get an agent for acting and um, I started going out on auditions. And one of my first auditions was on the Paramount lot. And I was going to audition for uh, Happy Days. Happy Days? Happy Days. Awesome. And I had my bag, you know, I had my attache case with my pictures and resume. And I went into um, the casting office and I read and I thought I had a pretty good read. Mm -hmm. But they said, you know what? You're a little tall <laughs> to, to act opposite the Fonz. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we don't think you're going to get this. But Thanks for coming, you know, we'll call you back in the future for some yeah. other things. Well, when you get on the Paramount lot, and <laughs> you're, you're, uh -oh. you're, you're, you're from Detroit, <laughs> yeah. and you know, you I, I, right I, I, I love yeah, yeah, Detroit, yeah. love it, love it, you know, and, and it, it gave me, you know, the impetus to, to push, mm -hmm. right? And um, I'm on the lot and I'm not gonna leave. Mm -mm. No. no, 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 no. I'm going to take my pictures and resumes and start putting them on the desk of casting directors on the lot, mm -hmm. producers, et cetera. Yeah. So I started walking around, laying my stuff down, and I wandered onto the set of Taxi. And they were rehearsing, it was a table read. And I walked in again, holding my case, and I stood there for a while. And Tony Danza got up and he looked at me, and I looked at him, and he walked over, and he pushed me, Chuck, he pushed me like that. And he did like this. Well, we all know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. Kids growing up, we know what that is. I put my bag down, I put my dukes up too. And we started to shadow box, you know, we're playing around. And he stopped and he said, Jim, that's the guy. And Jim said, oh my God. Tony, come on, get back over here. We got to rehearse. I'm telling you, Jim, that's the guy. The next thing I knew, I was upstairs in the producer, James Brooks office, signing a contract to play Carl the Boxer on Taxi. And that was my first role. That's amazing. Uh, what an what unbelievable an amazing story. Show, now too. everybody out there is gonna be like breaking <laughs> yeah. into like all the studios. <laughs> Cause of that? you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That is yeah. amazing. Yeah. What a great yeah. story. It, it, it was really nice. A yeah. really nice experience. Now I gotta tell you. I and, get that on was, the set. and that happened the, the day after you moved here. Well, wouldn't that be something? <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, I tell you, it was one of my first Pretty auditions, soon. for sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, not long after that. But uh, I get on the set, and, and you know, of course, I did some talking while I'm upstairs sure. signing that contract with James Earl Brooks. He's uh, Earl Brooks. He's asking me about my boxing experience, and um, you know, you got to improv. I yeah. started You're like, saying, I was boxing with God. Let me tell you, yes, uh, yes. Sure. Uh, golden <laughs> gloves. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I did a lot of boxing. Mm. He said, "Great, this is perfect." So we get on the set. And um, you can fake a lot of things, but you can't fake the speed bag. Mm. Oh no. <laughs> That's that round little <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's so hard to do too, I've tried it. Oh, you know? No. So, um, How bad was it, Ryan? It was really bad, oh, <laughs> Stacy. it was bad. You know, I, my, my cover was, was blown. <laughs> it was blown. James L. Brooks was looking upstairs in his office, you know, because they're watching the thing from their office. They can yeah. see what's going on on the stage, and he's going, oh, Tony, what did you do, you know? So, um, Tony 
notices that this speed bag is not happening. So uh, he comes over to me and he says, look, we're going to put you on the uh, heavy bag. Now, everybody can hit the heavy bag, right? Easy. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So the scene opens up with me on the heavy bag. And the whole thing was about, it was, the episode was called uh, Alex Jumps Out of an Airplane. And um, Judd Hirsch, the role of Alex, mm -hmm. was trying to do all these daredevil kinds of things. And one of them was uh, boxing. And so um, I ended up boxing him. Hey, uh, Carl, yeah. want to box with my buddy? <laughs> sure. But Carl, I'm talking one round, man, no more, and I'm going to time it. And uh, take it easy on him, because he's new at this. Hey, hey, forget that take it easy stuff. Now, wait a minute. Now, I'm going to go all out, and I suggest you do the same thing. OK. No sense going crazy on me, though, you know? <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be all right. You got any last tips? Don't do this. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll go easy on the guy. <laughs> all right. OK, box. Looking good, Al. <laughs> Hey, man, you want to box or not? Uh-oh. Now here's another thing that's tough. You just get here, you're trying to make your way in Hollywood, and they're asking you to knock the hell out of Judd Hirsch. <laughs> do you want to be that guy? You, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I say go for it. If they're well, paying you to do it. Well, well, you know, we, we do a couple of takes and, you know, I'm not doing it. And he's, he's hitting me, trying to make me do it, but I'm not doing it. And they, you know, Tony said, hey man, you gotta hit him. You gotta, you gotta go for it. You gotta go for it. So, uh, you know, I hit him. <laughs> nice. I hit That's him. good. I hit him, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Great guy. The whole cast, everybody mm -hmm. was really nice. That's really yeah. cool, man. What a yeah. neat story, right? It's great. So then, what happened? How did the voiceover component come into play? Well, along the way, people would always say to me, you have a nice voice you should get into voiceovers. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know what voiceovers, I didn't know anything about yeah. what, what are you talking about, voiceovers? And people would explain it to me and uh, I made a demo. And it only had one real spot on it, some rap thing that uh, I had done. And so we added that. But um, a guy by the name of Nick Omana. Uh, I know Nick. You know Nick, mm -hmm. Nick's yeah. a great guy, great talent. Mm -hmm. uh, he um, made my first demo. And we had a consultation at first to see the types of things that I liked. And um, he felt that we talked better about things that we like, products and things like that. So we came up with a demo. At that time, a demo was almost two minutes long. Mm, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And today they're like a minute. Right. But um, so we made the demo and uh, I took it around to all of the agents in town and every agent said yes. So I was like, Wow, that's nice. Every agent every, every said agent yes. Every agent said yes. Can you believe that? Yeah, that was really nice. Um, that makes up for the speed bag. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. now, everybody's, everybody's, on, on, everybody's on kayak right now right. booking tickets to move to L.A. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, well, you, you had solid acting chops. Yeah. So yes. That's yes. And, true. And voiceover is voice acting. Mm -hmm. We're going to yep. get into that. Yes. So I um, took it around. Everybody said yes. I picked a place at that time uh, that had a voiceover department, ICM. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I had heard that they were the biggest and the best. And it literally turned my life around. Um, I put acting to the side for a while because I was so busy as a voiceover actor. It changed my life financially. Mm -hmm. um, 
there was so much money to be made in voiceover, and, and at that time it was even more than there is now. I mean, it was a, uh, you know, around 2002, 2003. Mm -hmm. It was just really hot. Um, and I started to do so much. I started to do promos and trailers and commercials and narration. I was so excited about it yeah. that I decided to write a book because I wanted other people to know about this great life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we don't do it anymore. Now I'm at home with my ISDN line and I rarely get to see anybody. But at the time, we drove to every job. Yeah. So I would see other voiceover artists and we would go have lunch and mm -hmm. go have drinks and, and just all these nice things, all the camaraderie at the agency, reading copy and so forth. So um, I was so excited about it. I wanted everybody to know. So I wrote this book called you can bank on your voice that you mentioned, mm -hmm. Stacey. That's right. And um, the book I wrote to tell everyone about this wonderful business. But what happened was people were inspired by it, too. And they said, we have learned a lot about voiceover from your book. But what I really like is the motivation. Mm -hmm. You know, how positive you are and how motivated you are and how you preach that. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, I'm going to write a second book called Step Up to the Mic, a positive approach to succeeding in voiceovers, which deals with being positive as mm -hmm. we go about the business. And I had wonderful people um, contribute to a section of the book um, about how a positive attitude helps you in your career. Mm -hmm. And um, just... Have you always had a positive attitude or even in the times when it was slow or you were auditioning and maybe you weren't getting the steam going. I mean, have you always had that positive attitude? How do you keep it, especially in times when maybe it's a little... Well, no doubt about it, Stacy. it's tougher then, mm. right? It's tougher at that time. And um, I, I won't sit here and say that I never, you know, got depressed or felt like uh, I wasn't going to get another job at a certain time. Mm -hmm. But what would keep me afloat? Um, is the fact that I knew that it was something I really loved. Mm. I knew that I was doing what I was called to do. Mm. And I think if we trust our passion, uh, I think we have a better chance at succeeding in anything that we do. Absolutely. Be voice yeah. over no or doubt whatever. About that. If you're passionate exactly, about it yeah. and you really believe in it, uh, you stay the course. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I did that, things would soon turn around. And I would say to myself, wow, it's real good I didn't stop doing it. I never would have got this particular job, right? Yep. Or I never would have got to do this. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's important to hang in there and have the faith and believe that this is what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, man. And you brought those books with you. Can mm -hmm. I check them out yeah. real quick? Yeah, And definitely. where's the best place for people to get them? Well, um, the new... This is Step Up to the Mic? That's mm -hmm. right, Step Up to the Mic. At, at any store. Any, any store, you yeah. know, you go in, uh, if it's not there on the shelf, just ask I'm just going to read this really quick. <laughs> hey, you know, take it in. Uh, once you stop, you can't stop. No, nah, right, right, right. I love stop, it. Yeah. I love mm -hmm. it. Well, let's, um, let's talk about some of your commercial campaigns. So for years, what is it, eight years and counting, you've been the voice of Zatarans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love those. Yeah. Twix candy bars, mm. Domino's pizza, mm -hmm. instant tax service. That's right, yeah. And on and on. <laughs> and on and um, on. So what is your approach for, in, I mean, you do promos and trailers in so many different genres, but what is your approach to interpreting commercial copy? That's a good question. Um, what I try to do is, uh, first of all, read that voiceover direction. That's important. And um, after that, I have a few questions when I do have questions, and I listen intently to what is told to me. And, um, and then I try to uh, internalize it. I, I try to make it my own. Mm -hmm. um, the trend today in commercials, they're looking for the real person read. Mm -hmm. And uh, what people don't know out there is that it takes technique to be real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay, that's a great okay, point. because what happens mm -hmm. is as soon as we see the red light or someone says action or we think it's time to go, we go into something. Yeah. yeah. Right? It's just natural, sure. right? So we need to know the proper technique to not do that. And we need to know the proper technique to do what we're doing here right now. We're just talking. Sure. And we need to do that when we look at the copy. Mm -hmm. And so when I get into teaching, I, I teach techniques to help you do that. For instance, um, if you've got a piece of copy and they tell you they want a real person, 
think about it in your mind or if you get a chance to rehearse on your own and add a name. Chuck, if you had a piece of commercial copy that you were about to read and somebody said, Chuck, what, what is it that you want? You know, and, and, and you might say to yourself, well, Stacy, let me tell you what I want. Exactly. OK. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, if this is an audition at home and you're about to send it off, of course, you're not going to send that part where you said, Stacy, let me tell you no. what I want. Nobody knows that that is what got you into being natural and real right. throughout the piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a little game that we do. Yeah. That's a little thing where we bring in a relative, a friend, whatever. A dog. Uh, a dog. Yeah. If you don't cat. have a Stacy, use a dog. <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> or a cat. And you know, whatever, right? You know, yeah. and and uh, you you. Uh, do that, and that helps you get real, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. I just think about things that I teach, things that I've done, tricks and trades that I've learned through the years, mm -hmm. and I apply that to interpreting the copy. Exactly. Because here's the deal. It's not how you sound that wins the job. Because there are a million guys with low voices, baritone, yeah. tenor voices, girls with sopranos, high, everybody, you know. Yeah. What's the difference? How I interpret the copy. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Interpretation is everything, mm -hmm. right? Now, I'm not saying that you don't have to sound good. You do. But the most important thing is interpreting that copy. Absolutely. And I'm going to add to that, not sounding like you're reading. Thank you. Because mm -hmm. uh, when the writers, producers, directors are listening back to all these auditions, mm -hmm. not just one or two, but like a lot of them, they're hearing everything. That's right. Right? right. Uh, she's too old. He's too young. Right, right. Uh, that guy sounds like he has a cold. Mm -hmm. uh, this is too fast. This is mm -hmm. too slow. It's not mm -hmm. energetic enough. It's boring. And then all of a sudden, bam, what was that? Mm. Life. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> You're because right. Yeah. when so somebody, right. when they're writing this copy for this commercial, right. Um, they've read it a million times. That's they've right. had people at the agency read it. They had the the clients read it. Mm -hmm. Everybody's read it. The mm -hmm. last thing they're they're looking for is somebody to read their copy. Oh, you are so right. Yeah, right? Yes. We should teach yes. together. Well, that would be good. Let's do it. <laughs> we are. And, and, and take it on the road. <laughs> and right. take it on the road, baby. <laughs> you can take your guitars. <laughs> That's and right. Ronnie That's and right. Chuck are going on tour, baby. Hey, We're going to hey. rock and roll. Okay, so you are a very busy working actor. Mm. Do you think that influences how you teach other actors? Yes, no doubt about and it. And how do you do you think it makes you more effective, or how do you think it makes you effective being well out um, there in the trenches, as Chuck always says? Yes, yes. This is what I think about that because I am in it. I know what they're looking for, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. I know the latest trends, um, and a lot of people wouldn't take the time to do this. You gotta love it. You yep. gotta love the business, and you gotta love teaching. Mm -hmm. And I do. I get a big kick out of it. I tell my students that I vicariously have gotten the job every time you get one. Mm -hmm. I, I really yeah. do. I really do like it. Yeah. And so um, by being out here and when I hear things like, you know, people keep saying that ISDN is leaving and, you know, I just did ISDN this morning and I did it yesterday <laughs> and I do it all yeah. the time. And then, and then when they keep having that argument, I say, well, you know what? When it leaves, I'll just go wherever it goes next. If it's Source yeah. Connect, I'll sure, do that. Sure. Why so, not? What, what, First of all, that's cheaper. So yeah, 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 yeah right on, baby. Right. So, it's more portable. <laughs> yeah, right. So what are we what are we arguing about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. So um, being a person that's in it, I can give them the real deal. Absolutely. But that's not to knock teachers who don't do it too, because we have some great teachers out there. We really do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And by the same token. Um, being a working actor helps you be a better teacher. Mm -hmm. Does being a teacher help you be a better actor? Chuck, that's great. Wow, what you just said is hot. That's hot. <laughs> that's yeah. really Get hot. Down, and you know why? Because it is true. Yeah. Yes. Yes, that's that's a great observation. You're gonna steal that. Right? <laughs> well, You're gonna steal that. Well, I just said it. It's steal already it. gone. It's I already it. gone. It's an excellent observation, but it also speaks to the fact that you are still you are not standing on the top of the oh, mountain no. saying I know everything. You are still open yeah. to receiving yes. information and learning from your students yes. and and the back and forth that happens. And so. I do learn from them, yeah. Stacy. And and I'm always a student. Mm -hmm. I'm always learning. Yeah. You know, I don't just learn from my students. I'm still learning from teachers. Absolutely. And, 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 my and your, your fellow actors as well, My fellow actors, too. of course. Um, yeah. when, while he's watching VO Buzz Weekly. That's right. Exactly. That's, That's what right. happens. No, no doubt about um, it. So, Shameless. Uh, <laughs> question for you here. Mm -hmm. You are a big supporter of the Don LaFontaine voiceover lab here in Los Angeles. Yes, I am. Um, 
How did Don influence your voiceover career? Because I know that there's a little story there, yeah? Yeah. Don uh, definitely influenced my career. In fact, uh, he's one of the contributors to my book, Step Up to the Mic. When you get it, you can read a uh, paragraph, a couple of paragraphs that Don wrote about what a positive attitude did mm. in his career. Uh, also, uh, Nancy Cartwright is in there and uh, Harlan Hogan and mm. a, lot, a lot of good people. Good um, Don, wow. Don LaFontaine. Um, Can you imitate Don? No. <laughs> don't even come. I always ask everybody that. Because, right. no, you know, I just love that voice. I don't, I don't go there. All I don't right. go there. But let me say this. On his website, he had a section of other voiceover actors. And I was fortunate enough to be one of them. Mm. Yeah. And I thought, my God, what, what, a, what a gesture. And that was before he contributed to my book. Yeah. Um, he just put me there. He put my face there and my bio and the whole bit. And you don't know how many people uh, told me that they knew of me from his website. Wow. I got work from being on his website. And I just thought that was like beyond generous. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. I mean, yeah. here is a voice actor saying, hey, here's some other guys that I think are really great too. Isn't that something? So, so if you can't yeah. afford me, mm -hmm. use this guy. Yeah. Ah. Isn't that something? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's really something. Yeah, you know, I never got to do the limo ride like mm -hmm. a lot of my friends did, but um, I, I, am, I was a strong admirer and, and, and still. And I have taught at the lab. Mm -hmm. um, when it first uh, went up, I was yeah. one of the early teachers there, and I look forward to going back. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so you've been through so many on so many different TV shows throughout your career. Right. The Young and the Restless, mm -hmm. The Bold and the Beautiful, you're currently on that. We're going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. Law and Order LA, Taxi, we talked about MASH, <laughs> Give Me a Break, 227, Hill Street Blues, Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, mm -hmm. Without a Trace, Monk, Capital. Do you have any standout moments of, of being on any of those shows that were really defining moments for you as an actor? Mm -hmm as a life lesson or as a professional lesson that you still mm -hmm. kind of keep with you? Mm -hmm. Or a fun story even. Right, right, right. I think, um, well, definitely the taxi story. Right? Yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, that, that sticks out. Uh, MASH was wonderful to be with somebody like Alan Alda and the rest of the cast. Um, my current situation, um, I have a recurring role on the soap opera, uh, The Bold and the Beautiful, and I play a guy named Anthony. Mm -hmm. Anthony was a homeless man out on the streets, and when we filmed my first episodes, it was uh, on Skid Row. And, I was going to ask yes. if you actually did. Yes. Okay. Wow. And it was uh, two of the hottest days mm -hmm. in history, let alone that year. Um, and um, I had this big old backpack and, and the clothes, and you know I was dressed like a homeless person, and it was hot. And and I, I just got to tell you, you know, you talk about method acting or, or whatever it takes to get into it. Mm -hmm. But to be over there and um, to be hot and to be dressed and in character uh, and to think about what real homeless people have to go through, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I would have to say that that was one of the most touching things. Mm -hmm. And uh, the character got cleaned up, came off the streets, and, and now he's you know working at a place called Daisy's. and. He's, uh, um, you know, singing and, and doing great things. But I must say that when he was that raw guy, yeah. right, mm -hmm. uh, that was most exciting. Yeah. Yes. Well, I, we, I want to kind of go into your singing, mm -hmm. your singing realm. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful voice. But on Bold and the Beautiful, you've written several songs and actually gotten to perform them Isn't in the show. Something? How yeah. cool is that? Yeah, that is cool. insanely now, did you, cool. Now, did you say, hey, I write, and, or did they come to you, or how did that happen? Well, um, that's, that's a great story. When I auditioned, I read the script. You know, Chuck talked about reading that VO direction and... Mm -hmm. and uh, and how you get into a role, and I read the script, and I noticed that his CDs were stolen uh, oh. while he was on Skid Row. Some yeah. guys came by and, and beat him up, and they took his CDs. And I thought as I looked at that, I said, hey, I got my own CD. So when I went to the audition, I took my CD in with me, and I gave it to the... I love the, this guy. I love I this gave, guy. I gave it to the casting... Yeah, I gave it to the casting director, and I auditioned, and the audition was a bunch of days. Yeah, things mm -hmm. were going by and you never knew and then they'd bring you back and every time you'd come back the room would be a little thinner, it'd be a few less guys yeah. and, and I'm like, okay, I'm down to this, I'm down to that. And uh, finally it came down to myself and another guy and I went in and I did my thing and, uh, and I ended up getting the part. 
And the next thing I knew, it turns out that uh, Brad, who is uh, the director of the show, um, really liked that CD. Mm. And not only did he like it, he based some of the storyline around one of the songs, Miracles. Wow, that's cool. Wait, we have to see this. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about Look that at this CD. handsome man. Wow. Better than before, Rodney Salisbury. Where can people get this, Rodney? They can get that at uh, iTunes, iTunes. Um, Amazon. CD baby. Well, and I if love you, the names drive, of the songs. You can do it better than before. Believe in yourself. I'm your guy. Love in your heart. Wait on me. Miracles. I just love that everything about your brand. You you walk the walk and you talk the talk. Yes. I mean, you are yes completely authentic. I have so much respect well, thank for that. You. Thank you. Yeah, Speaking of my absolutely. students, um, one of my students just told me the other day that um, uh, they had gone through a bout with cancer, mm. and, uh, and they're doing fine now. Mm. And my song on this particular album, Believe in Yourself, is what held them together oh. the, the whole way. Wow. And uh, that, that really touched me. And that's the reason I wrote it. It's, I call it motivational music. Mm -hmm. And um, it's about seven or eight songs of, of just motivation. I that's love it. That's beautiful. Do you want to play any for us? Well, I guess I'll do can you, a little can bit, you a little like, bit of one. Can you like do a little a bridged version, just, version just a, of, just, uh, yeah. just a, just of something for us? Okay. I mean, because come okay. on, you're not going to come here on VO Buzz Weekly talk about a, a freaking uh, hit record and books and all this. Look at him. He's a I star. Mean, we, we, he was going to read his entire book, but we thought uh -huh. We said, you know, maybe <laughs> another episode. <laughs> we thought maybe That would take some time. Right? Okay, right? good. All right, well, we're going to get the guitar queued up. Well, that is all the time we have today for part one with Rodney Salisbury. But the good news, yes. we're coming back next week with part two, and you're going to love it. Yes, you are. In between now and then, keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest at Vio Buzz Weekly. We'll see you next week, and just remember, you guys, you, you always, always have time, time for a little buzz. buzz.